Hello everyone. Welcome to Contact Lost. I think by now we can safely say the best podcast in English from Poland. Um, <laughs> I think that's not too much to say. <laughs> that's not an exaggeration. Um, and with me today, uh, quite an, an unusual assortment of people because usually we have a bunch of guests, a bunch of people from outside of the podcast who join us. Today, Nothing like that. Today, uh, we are only the three of us, only the three core members of Contact Lost. Uh, so today with me, I have uh, Joker. Hey, guys. And Vitalis. Hello, hello. Especially about the second guy, you might you might question who the hell is that? Because, you know, you might not have uh, seen the single bat rep that we've done with Vitalis, or you might not have seen, I don't know if we even released this, like Vitalis's episode about knights and his yeah we got one we got one yeah we got one we so that we didn't release a uh, second bat rub that we did oh yeah true all right so you got so, guys love the files uh yeah <laughs> they went somewhere um or i failed at uploading them to to the google drive because my phone didn't want to cooperate anywho um so basically the three of us this is the core of contact lost so this is the, the the merry bunch that has gone to the lgt uh you might not have seen, if you haven't been to the LGT, but only like watched it uh, online or something like that, you probably haven't witnessed a lot of Vitalis just because he is the technical mastermind behind everything that we had done. Um, and Michal and myself, we are the voices and the faces of the podcast, but this is probably going to change this year. We shall see because we want Vitalis to participate more. We want to record more battle reports, blah, blah, blah. Um, anyway, uh, enjoy his voice, enjoy us. And today we are recording this episode because like every other podcast, uh, we have come to the conclusion that it's probably uh, the right time to do a little summary of the year. And uh, we want to sum up uh, the road that we have come throughout the, the year because we are still a fairly new podcast, but boy, was it a bumpy ride. And, uh, and yeah, and we want to encourage you to listen to us more and maybe get to know, uh, get, get to know us a little bit better. So, Let's start with like a very general and simple question, guys. Um, I'll, I'll start with with Joker. Maybe um, we came back to making this podcast after the break that I called for that lasted like a year. Because if if you guys don't know, we had been making this I think three years ago or like two years ago, and then we stopped, and then we had a year long break, and then we came back again, and now we've been doing this for a year again um so joker a question to you are you today in the place where you wanted to be with this podcast or do you think that there is still a lot that needs to be done um you broke up a bit can you actually repeat the question <laughs> sure so we've been doing it for a year but truth mm -hmm. be told we've been doing it for a longer time but we had a long break in the middle um do you think that now after a year of doing this, because we started, I think, somewhere around September of last year or something like that, again, um, are you happy with where the podcast is? Are you happy with the road that we have covered since then? Uh, well, I think it's a bit of a yes and no, uh, because honestly, I think we've gotten somewhere where we would never have hoped to be. Mm -hmm. And... Um, I think it's there's a lot of blame on me, but I also think that we haven't really, uh, you know, lived up to the potential that we might have had uh, due to the events or actions that we have taken over the over the last year. So, okay. uh, you know, I mean, the show started out as just us talking uh, about Warhammer uh, with some, well, maybe not random people, but, you know, mainly know. guys from the national team or some others. And then, you know, things have really grown over the space of last year. I mean, we've added Vitalis, we've had a show of bat reps, and mainly uh, we've been at the LGT and had some amazing guests from like all over the world. We've also been guests twice, if I remember correctly, mm -hmm. on the shows uh, from uh, other people. So, yeah, that's really a lot, but I think, and I'm, like I said, I'm sh aware that I'm to blame for this, uh, at least partially. Uh, we lack consistency and we maybe could have done a little bit more um, marketing, shall I call oh, it? Oh, yeah. yeah. What definitely. do you think? 
Uh, I, I think so as well. I mean, uh, we probably could have invested more energy in the podcast than what we have done. But then again, uh, I mentioned this when we spoke to Steve Joel, uh, that we do not treat this professionally. This is not our job. This is not, you know, we are not winning bread with this. We are, we, we have our regular jobs and we do this as a hobby. Um, so as much as we want this to be as informative and as competitive as possible, it's not always possible due to life. Uh, but hopefully with the time passing, uh, we can make it even more competitive and even more informative and even more regular, I, I think, because this is what ultimately we want to achieve. Um, so Vitalis, you are the, the freshest addition to, uh, to the group. How has that experience been for you? Like, uh, I imagine, you know, when, when you entered the year, when the year started, you, you, you never even thought of participating in a podcast. And now, you know, you are part of the team, the inherent part of the team, the, the, the big brain behind all the technicalities that we do. Uh, how has that been for you? And, and are you enjoying the ride? So first of all, uh, technicalities, uh, you were doing uh, just fine without me. I just added some maybe. <laughs> uh, Clinic about rough edges, mm. so don't be so humble You're too about modest. that. <laughs> you too. Uh, anyway, uh, so first of all, uh, before I joined you guys, I was really looking up to your work. So when you asked me to 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 take some take a part in, in Contact Lost, I was like, "Wow, that's gonna be awesome!" And I was really really surprised and really happy. Uh, but uh, I think yeah, it has been uh, it has been hell right uh maybe like 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 you said at the start i haven't been releasing a bit of of my own content on or participating in in your in yours uh mostly i had also a wild year uh so i will step up uh next year for that uh but i think yeah the battle report uh the, the first one even it was super rough on the edges it was for me, it was a really nice experience. Yeah, it was a ton of fun. Yeah, it was fun, and and I guess our our viewers and listeners really really liked it. Mm -hmm. the, the, the statistics show that. So definitely, we we need to to continue working on that uh, to to smoothen it up. And of course, the LGT LGT was was a blast. That was adventure of its own. Even even that we didn't touch any miniatures uh, for the whole weekend. Yeah, I so wanted to say that ironically, uh, you joined the last, I mean, you joined the crew the last, but you were the first one to travel, you know, for, for the purposes <laughs> of the podcast out of the entire team. <laughs> because yeah, the ones, yeah who, who went to England first. Yeah, because I was uh, I was uh, working with Zach actually twice, for those of you that don't know. Uh, we had uh, I had participated in a little event. Uh, it was a month before, two weeks, mm -hmm. or something, yeah, like yeah, something like that. Yes, it was our our test run, our our working working prototype, <laughs> whatever we call it. So yeah, it was it was even a double blast. Yeah. So so uh, so, so uh, for for those people who were thinking maybe uh, how. Our pre or what our preparations for the LGT looked like it was exactly that. It started way, way, way before with just some conversations with Zach, and then we sent Vitalis to to the UK to actually participate in a big tournament uh, before the LGT, so that he could get used to the hardware that Zach's organization uh, offers. Uh, you know, microphones, lights, uh, more microphones, computers, and software related to uh, doing all this. And then when the LGT came, at least he had some experience because me and Joker, we had no experience in front of the camera whatsoever. Joker, yeah. am I right? You, you had no experience like that. No, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, um, I think, you know, kudos and balls of steel <laughs> on Zach's side that he actually invited two people uh, or three, well, three people with as little experience as, as, as ourselves to cover an event of that magnitude but hey uh it, it we did it out well yeah we did it yeah and um we can yeah. put it in our resumes <laughs> absolutely absolutely yes so uh okay so that, that was let's say the lengthy introduction uh but let's um 
let's focus on the hobby itself. So uh, again, Joker, I'll start with you. Um, did you enter the year with any sort of um, hobby targets for 2022? And then, uh, you know, did you manage to realize them or are you still working on them or? Um, yeah, are you done with them? <laughs> so I did have, uh, let's say two targets. So uh, the first one was to be a better player and to achieve like um, a top 10 in the Polish rankings. And I am way off of that. <laughs> uh, so yeah. <laughs> and but the other still the best out of our three. <laughs> Absolutely. Oh, oh thanks. Uh, and um, the second target was uh, to get some painting done, uh, get some of my armies up to you know at least two thousand points for the tabletop ready. And I have managed to not achieve that as well. Uh, <laughs> So yeah, it, it was really a, a fantastic year. <laughs> All right, so so, but I, I've played against you many times. I've played against your knights. I've played against your demons recently, like two days ago. Uh, they all seem pretty much painted. So you know, what is missing? What's not ready? Uh, well, yeah, you know, there's still a couple of models that are just primed or like uh, need a little bit of touch ups. Uh, but no, well, yeah, in all honesty, it's, it's not that bad. It's much better than it was before. Uh, although the last three months I haven't been really able to do a lot of hobby or at least as much as I would have liked to. Um, but as I've mentioned on uh, previous episodes, I also kind of lost a bit of motivation. Mm. So <clears throat> it all adds up. And um, in terms of in terms of gaming, I think I started out the year quite strong. I was really involved, uh, you know, going to all of well, maybe not all of them, but as many GTs as I could, as many local tournaments as I could, playing as much TTS as I could. But then it, around June, it kind of stopped working. I think I was jumping armies maybe a bit too much mm -hmm. and not picking them up fast enough, you know, as in um, being able to play them uh, well. And uh, you know, there's also the meta changes, and at some point, they the changes in the rules were not particularly uh, graceful uh, for me uh, or the armies that I have. So you know, without the skill and uh, the hours of time you can put in uh, to repetitions, uh, you kind of really need a strong army to, in a way, make up for that if you want to get results. Uh, if you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, yeah, so, you know, and then not getting the results I think I sh I thought I should be getting was also a bit of a bummer, somewhere like mid-year, uh, like mentioned. And uh, yeah, that's that. But I did participate in two of the national team uh, TTS sparring, so that's a bit of a highlight. I lost one game, won one game, so fairly even. Um, yeah, and that's that's generally my year, I think. Mm. Okay, so yeah, quite quite, uh, I would say, eventful uh, for you. How about you, Vitalis? What was your were your ambitions stepping into twenty twenty two as you know as big or at least comparable to Joker's, or, or were you more laid back about it? Uh, yeah. I know that you. Sorry, just I'll, mm -hmm. I'll, the second part of the question. I know that you participate in like a ton of those small point tournaments like 600 500 1000 uh, that happen in local stores so did you have any ambition regarding those to win as many as possible or something like that or were your ambitions not as competitive uh well basically for the the small small points that you mentioned uh well maybe i will get to that mm -hmm. uh so first of all i uh, from my uh, i had uh, like a point in in uh, in uh in my blog that I even want to forget that I have a blog because uh, I started the year with, with a blog called First Legion from Leda, uh, referring to my Dark Angels, that mm -hmm. I uh, said I will paint all my Dark Angels this year. Uh, let's say, well, guess why I want to forget about it. I painted <laughs> like two squads and maybe one, one tank, something like that. Uh, so that was my painting ambition this year. But I managed to paint my Tau, 
uh, hold 2000 points to, to pretty, I think, good standard. And uh, I managed to gather and paint all the Chaos Knights that I really enjoy playing still. Uh, even that the meta is very, very unforgiving for, for Knights players right now. Mm -hmm. uh, and back to gaming. Uh, yeah, I started the year with a lot more focus on small, uh, smaller tournaments, uh, like you mentioned, like 600, like uh, 1,000 and 200, something like that. Uh, but uh, I, actually, I managed to win or at least score top three at most of them. So very fast into the year, I switched to to normal 2K games. Uh, so like from I think April, May, something like that. I was focusing almost entirely on 2K games uh, with maybe not decent, but not terrible scores on our on our national uh, GTs. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, of course, there was uh, team championship, the first first team championship for, for me. Even I'm playing this game like forever, and that was the first one. It was it was something totally new for me. It was a blast. So, yeah, I had fun with, with those two cases and focusing on that right now. Well, right now I'm waiting for some rules changes because I'm a bit fed up with where the 40k is at the moment. So how, how can you be fed up with a game if you own all the armies? That's, all, that's always something that bugs me about you. Like, <laughs> you could literally pick anything and just go and play something else that has better rules. How can you be fed up with that? Because it's uh, at one point it's not fun to 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 play something totally overpowered uh, like Votans or or the or the new guard that can erase pretty much everything in one turn of shooting. I had a game with a new guard that my opponent uh, surrendered after one round of shooting. That was so, with against Votan, right? As far yep, as I remember. yep, even that. Uh, so. If, uh, 40k is right now at the place where you either win very hard or you just struggle to win against uh, some overpowered armies and even though i have all of those like half of those currently is only for playing for fun if i go to a tournament with i don't know the drukari that i recently really enjoyed making lists for uh i will get slaughtered if I go with Maureen's, I will get slaughtered. My 12-year-old daughter slaughtered me with Maureen's recently. So it's either you play a couple of those competitive armies or you 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 don't get results. And I think uh, if I go to the tournament, uh, even though I want to have fun, I want to have a bit of results at least to, to get to the middle of the table. So yeah, I, I really I'm really waiting. I'm really missing the the the, the fun I had at the start of the year. Uh, but right now I'm a little little fed up for a couple of last weeks. And what about you, Tweak? I mean, it must have been some year for you as well since returning to the hobby and actually not selling an army. <laughs> So uh, that's spot on. That's something that I wanted to, to speak about a little bit later, but I might as well now. Um, so for those who listen to us who don't know me, uh, I am pretty notorious for changing armies like every half a year or something like that. Or I have, at least I have been in the past. So um, I would usually buy an army very close to like the end of the meta for that particular army. Uh, which then generated a lot of frustration because I bought the army, I was expecting results, but the meta has already shifted, so I was behind the meta. And then I would sell the army in frustration, buy a new one, and rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat. And uh, I think that up to now, there are only two armies that I haven't played yet uh, in this hobby, which as a, you know, a, a, an optimist, uh, I always try to look uh, for positive things in, in, in stuff. So in this one, I think, at least I know what the armies do, more or less, the ones that I have played. But yeah, but this time I managed not to sell any armies. I own everything that I bought after the return to the hobby. Um, so I have wolves still, maybe not like complete, but the majority of the force that I had. Uh, 
I have my Tyranids that are untouched and still growing, and I have um, recently started uh, Death Guard that uh, I also do not intend um, to sell. So it went the other way around. I have more than I had. Um, I also, the, the year was great because I came back from like a really dark place and the hobby uh, helped me deal with some demons, let's say, uh, and uh, and it surpassed my expectations. Uh, you know, I traveled, we, we traveled together to Krakow, uh, so to the south of Poland, a place that I never even imagined I would go to, to play miniatures uh, because that's so far away and it's like a seven or hour, eight hour drive. Uh, I didn't think my wife would let me go, but she did. Um, then we went to Bidgosz for another tournament, uh, which was also great. Um, and then we went to freaking London and we did the LGT. So, I mean, you know, I, I, if someone told me at the beginning of the year that we would be traveling to London to cover an event, uh, I would laugh in his face. So, yeah, um, for me, the year was absolutely amazing. New armies, new people uh, that I've met. Everything was great about this year. And I don't feel uh, the hobby burnout right now, but this is because I felt it last year. So maybe my batteries are, are um, still charged, uh, I guess. Um, and I wish that everyone could say the same. Um, so Vitalis, you, you touched upon something, uh, well, extremely important, which is the state of the meta. And you both actually said that you are pretty tired with it right now. My solution to that, change armies, <laughs> but it does, clearly doesn't work for you. Um, I, I changed a system, I'm playing Sigmar recently. <laughs> uh, yeah, so we don't want that. We want to keep you in the hobby still in this particular game. But um, has that been the case throughout the entire year? I guess this is the question. So we will not go like month, month after month uh, uh, f with releases and so on. But we all, and our listeners as well, they probably remember what the trends used to be, where the year started, the events that we went to uh, or participated in. Um, was there ever a time that you enjoyed more than now throughout this year? And, uh, you know, do you have high hopes for what's coming in 2023? Joker, let's start with you. Um, I think, yeah, absolutely. Uh, I went into the year quite strong in terms of motivation and you know um the desire to to play and to like ho actively hobby and um i although that was also a time that ridiculous things started to appear in the game so you know that was the time that custodies and tau uh, came out and they got ridiculous win rates and after that it was Harlequins, which was even worse, and then Tyranids, uh, which were also crazy. Um, so, you know, that might have been the reason that, <clears throat> even though I went into the year strong, like I said, uh, the motivation just went down over the course of the year. And then when Nephilim hit in, um, I, I had the first feelings that it's making the game a bit flat. And I think that was like a big turning point for me. Also, uh, Knights were released shortly before that. And uh, that's one of my favorite armies. I really wanted to play it and play it with great success, but it just wasn't going for me, uh, which was also a bit of a bummer. Uh, and then I couldn't really fall back onto the other armies I had. So Thousand Sons were in a really bad moment at that point in time. Um, Drukaria after Nephilim are just not the same as they were before. Uh, nowhere near that level, probably, of obscurity, uh, of ob obscenity, of being obscene. <laughs> 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 which is good. Nice it, <laughs> yeah, which is which is a positive in itself because no army should be like overpowered like Drakari or Admech were back in the day. Um, but you know, for a player, it was a bit of a bummer that now I've recently acquired one army and the other two that I had previously, not all of them are up to par. So that was probably yeah the middle of the year was a bit of a breaking point and then obviously i was more focused on organizing the tri-city heresy that i didn't participate because as a to it's just crazy 
and I didn't want all that stress in my head. And then it was the LGT really shortly after that. So not much playing time, if you will, mm -hmm. between those two events. And that's just how it went, I guess. Okay. Vitali, same question to you. So uh, was there, in, in this year, was there a good spot for you? Like a spot where you really enjoyed the game? Um, you, know, you were happy to be playing this and not thinking about Sigmar, stuff like that. Uh, the, maybe let's let's touch Sigmar because uh, don't get me wrong, I still love 40k and Sigmar is pretty much a filler right now. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> it's temporary. Don't, yeah, don't get any worries about that. It's a side check. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> uh, and back to your question. I think uh, Joker really summed it up because uh, start of the year was really really nice, and then just there was one army that was OP. Uh, meaning Tau, then came the Christodes, then came the uh, the Votans, the Harlequins, and it all ooh, added, added, added up to the end of the year being really, really stale uh, uh, for 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 me. But uh, as a very avid uh, night player, I I was really really enjoying the game when the both night codexes dropped. Uh, surprisingly, even to me, I switched from Imperial ones to Chaos ones, uh, and I really, really had a blast with with three Chaos, uh, three big Chaos Knights. Uh, I think I was the only player in Poland playing three big ones, possibly. <laughs> yeah, and I, I really had a blast because uh, for a time before Votans dropped, uh, that list was pretty durable. It it could really the big guys could really stand some punishment and that's what I was expecting from 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 those big models, uh, but yeah it it all went south from from that point because uh, right now yeah the, the the word flat for 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 TK is I think really good word uh, at the moment so yeah well, we're, we're waiting for the new data slate that is that is. For the leaks are really uh, promising, at least for yeah, me. Yeah, it's definitely going to turn the game upside down, so th th that's for sure. Um, so, I mean, I agree with you that the game has been changing a lot, and the balance of the game probably hasn't been the best, because usually what comes out is just the strongest, and simple as. I think there hasn't been a codex where this hasn't been true. Uh, I started the year playing wolves uh and then come like the i think what january february i started buying tyranids um because i knew the codex was coming and it was looking really good so it did it did come out um crasher stampede stampede was still there uh, i don't know if you remember what that was but it was still there so when we were going to uh to Krakow arena in march it was still in force, and there were a couple of uh, players playing Crusher Stampede, including myself. Yeah, PT uh, PTSD <laughs> about that is still real. Yeah, now that you've mentioned Stampede, I just and I mentioned Custodes and Tau before. Yeah. I just remembered one local tournament we had, where there were uh, yeah, it was before the Net Codex, but still Stampede. Uh, obviously, Custodes and Tau release, so there was out of thirteen players, we had. One Tau, four Custodies, and four Crusher Stampedes. Yep. It was a fucking great evening, that. And uh, funnily enough, I didn't bring Stampede to that. So we had like five turrets, but four of them playing Stampede. And it was won by Stampede. But yeah, because you just love point. to give yourself handicaps, don't you? I, I always do. Um, yeah, but um, so I took Stampede to crack out and I did miserably uh, firstly because it was a new army I didn't really know the rules that well yet um, and, and second of all I didn't realize that when you take two higher duels on WT, <laughs> WTC terrain the bloody fuckers kind of like go through terrain or gaps between terrain because their bases are too big <laughs> so two of my um, my higher duels just sat in the deployment zone and couldn't walk on the table which you know didn't really uh, do too well for me. Um, but then after Crash Stampede, uh, the actual codex came out. And uh, I remember that I played, I think I, I managed to win an RTT this year. I managed to come second right after Vladi on another one. And I was actually so happy with that second place that on my way back home, 
Um, I was rushing home because the tournament was really like long and I wanted to get home to my wife and my kid and I got stopped by the police and I got like an 800 PLN fine or something like that, which is like what? $150. Ouch. Yeah. Uh, so, so it did hurt. It did sting a little bit. So, um, but you know, I was just happy and enamored with my place. You in got the what you so. deserve for playing during <laughs> For playing through. I knew someone would say that. So yeah. And then, um, as I said, uh, I, do agree, and I think I was the first one to say that Nephilim is going to um, spoil the game for us. That it was going to do away with um, variety uh, in lists. That we are going to see one relic, uh, like three warlord trade tops interchangeably or at the same time, because that's what the CP allow. And the army compositions are going to be fairly similar for most armies, and that unfortunately came true um however i must admit that i i like the fact that gw introduced the concept of data slates i think this is good overall i think they haven't been using it as courageously as they should or as i don't know courageous is not the right word but they haven't been using it um as Extensively, as they should. extensively as they should. Uh, changes in those data slates should be more uh, game changing, um, uh, ironically. And the, like the last data slate where they, I think, you know, they changed nothing for Admech, uh, they changed nothing for uh, Space Marines or just like a single stratagem um, or a single secondary. Uh, that's absolutely not what the players expect. So I think they should be more trigger happy with those and you know be sorry but try things out uh not the other way around just be very conservative with the changes i i, I think they um they invented something like a data slate and they should be trigger happy about it uh, i think I that's, that's, yeah. that's the best thing that happens to to warhammer 40k for a long time the data slates because i remember times when uh, back in fourth edition People were still playing with Necrons, I think, and Rukari called Dark Elder back there, uh, were playing with five year, year old rules. And it was it was a disaster. And also uh, when I had a, my fling with an X-Wing, uh, there was something similar to data slate there. And like you like you said, the, the guys from FFG were really, really trigger happy with the, their changes in there. Basically, the whole meta was shaken up every time this thing came up. Uh, and it was it was really refreshing, really good for the game, because like every three to four months, you had to rethink your plan for the list, for the game, for everything from the ground up. So I totally agree with you. They should really mess things up in those data slates a bit more right um the only thing that i that, that bothers me about this edition as a whole um uh, that i think uh affects the meta affects everything is the system of missions and secondaries uh to be perfectly honest somewhere around mid-year after playing this for a couple of months or more than a couple i came to the conclusions that the conclusion that i miss the cards that i miss the actual randomness of the game that you know you you draw the cards and suddenly it turns out you have to capture the objective on the other end of the table or that you need to i don't know score behind enemy lines or something like that uh in this turn um I, this is missing now you pretty much plan build your i mean some people probably enjoy this that you build your army for the missions and everything is planned but if you play the same army over the course of six months, seven months, this drives to burnout or simply boredom, <laughs> at least in my eyes. I don't know, Joe. The, the, the mission system is stale. Uh, um, I both agree and disagree, I would say. Uh, I don't miss cards at all. Um, I mean, what we had by the end of eighth was okay-ish, uh, but I very much prefer uh, the secondary primary system we have a ninth, except that after Nephilim, it's really, uh, like I said before, a bit flat. Uh, 
in terms of that, you know, you really each game you probably are picking the same secondaries because of uh, well lack of variety uh, or at least lack of you know the, the missions being at the same level of difficulty um, or just you know being possible to achieve with army A or army mm -hmm. B. So uh, was I do agree that it might be a bit boring nowadays. I like the system that is in place. I hate cards. I've always hated them. Uh, you know, just especially when you had that mission where you draw six at the beginning. I think it was deadlock, mm -hmm. cold deadlock, and, and discard them. Yeah, and you get six cards. None of them you can achieve, and that's just game for you. Uh, so mm -hmm. That was ridiculous. I mean, like I said, by the end of eighth, they've changed it a little. You could interfere with the deck, which was okay, but I still prefer the system that we have in ninth. Mm, fair enough. Okay, uh, Vitalis, how about you? Uh, I think that the system of the missions is pretty fine because uh, I also don't like the cards where you plan your battle plan and then you have to shift it 100, uh, 180 degrees because you draw a card like you mentioned, capture something at the opposite uh, end of the table. Uh, but uh, the execution is really flawed in 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 current in implementation. I think the Tau is pretty nice example here because everyone is playing the same missions uh the the, the score from third round uh what's what's there i don't remember the name of the second one uh but there is a pretty nice uh, nice uh, also secondary in there where you need to perform an action in the in the middle of the t of the table edges and if that would be a bit more i don't know balanced shift that's uh, corrected there are pretty nice builds that does it so it's pretty interesting to see the, how a Tao player will struggle to float the board with some cheap infantry or something uh, but no one plays it because mm -hmm. like 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 I mentioned the other ones are really easier to 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 execute and then for some armies, they're like I think that your tyrannids are a pretty good example because no one were was playing uh, any tyrannids secondaries for a while, if I yeah. remember correctly. Yeah, I mean, so. it's it's two 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 extremes. You either have factions that don't have reliable secondaries in their codexes, or you have factions that have two good secondaries in their codexes. And the the fact that you can take all three from your book just means that you get an automatic forty five like Necrons. I yeah, mean, the, the, exactly. The, the, the pinnacle of that was, um, I think, last week when I played against uh, Sietil from uh, the, the Norwegian national team, and we were playing in the Polish TTS league. Um, and by the way, I encourage everyone to participate in those because we welcome foreigners. It, it makes the, the league better. Um, you can meet amazing people, learn from them, and so on. And, and Sietil ended up on our podcast, by the way. Um, but still, we played uh, last week. Uh, I played my Death Guard against his Necrons, and you could just hear that he, even he is tired of his own army because <laughs> we're playing the league and he's like, and obviously I'm taking whatever the name of that secondary is, and this one, and of course this one. And then when we played the game, he was like, and I'm moving here to, of course, to do this, and of course to do that, and naturally he scored his 45. Um, the, the, the most entertaining thing about that game for him was me <laughs> and me playing an army that he isn't generally used to and uh, and yeah and and, and this I, war was I, quite i totally feel, feel get that feeling because for me it was the same at our uh, three city heresy i took necrons with no i think minimal prior experience uh, after after nephilim dropped uh i took even my crazy uh crazy flying sighton castle I mm -hmm. never remember how it's called. Tesseract. Uh, uh, Tesseract, yeah. Uh, and I scored, I think, top 10, 10th, 11th, something like that. And I, even, though, even though I had some fun with the Tesseract blowing half of my army, mm -hmm. uh, even uh, I have some fun uh, doing great overall, I was so fed up with the army after those 
five games that uh, for the team championship I I wasn't even looking at the Necrons. So it's totally boring to play. So yeah. Yes, it's, it, that's exactly what I'm talking about. So what do you think would be the remedy to that? Because um, I think that GW is is like on the fence right now and not sure whether they should maybe bring in more general secondaries. I mean, like the you know in the in a book available to all the factions or whether they should go with more fluffy secondaries uh, for a particular army in their codex. Which one for, do you think works better? For me, the secondaries are just the symptom of the disease. I think the game is overall too killy or too tanky for some armies. I think the same first one is more true right now mm -hmm. because I don't think there's a tanky army anymore in the game. Everything is killy like hell. Uh, so I think when GW will tone down on the killiness to to remain something to to allow something to remain on the table after some alpha strikes. Because right now, let's be honest, if you want something dead and you are playing a competitive army, it will die. Uh, so when that will be toned down uh, and the, the the overall basics of the game will be a bit tweaked, toned down, uh, balanced, I think the secondary is even in its current state, maybe aside from Necrons, uh, will be in would would be in a in a pretty healthy state. That's that's my opinion. That the secondaries are not the core of the problem; they are just the symptom. Okay, Joker. I mean, I'm not sure to be honest because uh, if you look across the faction secondaries, they they are also kind of repetitive. Uh, so unless someone goes to uh, new levels of creativity i don't think they can really come up with new missions that make a lot of sense so i think it's just a bit of balancing them out a bit um so that missions that are uh, similar like i've mentioned actually reward you in the same manner uh because i don't think that's actually the case right now uh but i'm not 100 percent sure about that to be honest do you think that yeah, they should I be like, uh, like you know, maybe grouped by difficulty as well? Like, I don't know. Uh, let's say the the easiest ones score the lowest points, and then the the more difficult ones give you the most points. Or is that the case already? Um, actually, that might have been interesting. But how do you judge the difficulty of an objective in a way? I mean, there are some really, uh, there are some ones that are hard on paper to achieve like you know you have to kill the enemy warlord on turn one and you get 15 points flat out uh, but that's like nigh impossible if you're playing against someone that has a brain uh, and there are ones that aren't really uh, well maybe not that difficult but you get like five points for doing them so i think a, a review of uh, what's there would be good just to even them out a bit. Uh, I think that's where I would start. Not necessarily, you know, a revolution, but an evolution. Ah, mm. there we go. I've made up a smart phrase. What do you think? Uh, I think I, I would like uh, GW to review the codex secondaries uh, and bring them to like uh, the same level for all people, <laughs> old and new. Uh, because if you think, if I think about my wolves, for example. I would love to play them right now, but the secondaries in their book are, some of them are ridiculous. I mean, one, it seems fairly easy to score because you have to charge something uh, with two units. Fine, that's not a problem. Uh, but there is one where you give agency to your opponent completely. And if, if I remember correctly, your opponent gets to select the character that you have to kill and then you need to get to their side of the table, kill that character, and only then do you score points. And if they have a character that they don't intend to move or don't see the need to move, and they just build a castle around him, that's impossible to score. So that's what I meant about difficulty. Some of them are ridiculously difficult because they 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 give agency to your opponents completely. And uh, let's be honest, people skip those. It's like the waste of of plays in a codex book. Like right? you have a secondary that. Ways to think Honestly, it should, yeah, exactly. It shouldn't be there because nobody plays it 
anyway, so maybe if you know th this hobby, very much like say football or soccer, um, has turned very much towards um, statistics, <laughs> and I think on an unprecedented scale, we see people analyzing numbers. Uh, you know, looking into stats, GW themselves, they, they analyze the statistics and they pride themselves on uh, having analyzed this or that. We have the meta watch every week. We have the uh, post on Reddit that analyze the wins, losses, what have you, you know, soon we will hear uh, how many steps players have done <laughs> during a tournament. <laughs> Seriously, like when we go into such deep detail, it's insane almost like in football. Um, Maybe what they should focus on with those statistics should be not only just the win loss ratio, but also like how frequently secondaries from a book are picked. And if there is something like a secondary, like the one that I, I said, I can't remember what the name of secondary is, but for wolves, that I, I assure you, no one even in uh, you know hobby games picks. Um, if there is a, a secondary that is on the level of zero percent, then just remove it, replace it with something else. Use the da balanced data slate for that. Just balance the game through addition of better secondaries um, or removing secondaries. You know what I mean? Like resetting, updating, and so on. So I think that's something that that, that is missing currently, especially with all the, let's call it, uh, uh, statistics and the technology around that and how much everyone is going batshit about numbers. Uh, that's an aspect that nobody is analyzing. And uh, you know, you know, you know what's the second, the, the the best part about uh, GW and the secondaries. Mm -hmm. I will I've, well mention Sigma at time to time because I really think uh, the rules in there are a bit better sometimes. But they managed to create almost perfect system of secondaries in there, and we we are struggling with with Necrons. So what is the better system in Sigma? How does that work there? Well. For 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 example, you are not picking secondaries before the battle. You are picking just one big secondary uh, before the battle. That is uh, even on your list. It's not picked uh, before each battle. It's picked on your uh, list level, and you have to accomplish that. Uh, and then you choose your secondary at the start of each of your turns. So you can. Like you, like you mentioned, you can adapt to the situation on the battlefield. The game is not flat and uh, set on from the start of the game, mm -hmm. but you, you, it's it's fluent. It's 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 evolving at the uh, at the point that you you want it to evolve, uh, to to flow, to evolve, to to adapt to to the to the thing on the battlefield. And you okay, get that, yeah. yeah. So yeah, that sounds that's, that that's sounds one one solution. That's one solution, but it's still. Yeah, whatever brings any sort of dynamics to the secondaries, I would be happy about that. If it's like the Sigmar system, fine. But to be honest, I, I would I would like to make it more dynamic just by the fact that um, somebody reviews whether these secondaries are used. Uh, I understand that it would be more difficult to track because probably you need to put some proper effort into checking which secondaries every single player played. But maybe. Uh, this is something that can be added in an app or something like that, or you know, manually collected. I don't know, but definitely something that this game is missing right now. So um, I think that it could be solved that way. Um, so yeah, I'm I'm actually waiting until uh, uh, you know we use all the stats that we have and so on, and we start um, calling the players athletes and so on, like we do in esport, etc. Um, but yeah, uh, listen. Uh, I think this wouldn't be a proper summary episode if we didn't look back at the, the season three, as we called it. Uh, basically, every year is, is going to be a new season or is a new season. So this was season three. Uh, in January, we will start season four. Um, Joker, are there any highlights of the season or any events or any episodes that you consider I don't know, either highlights of the season or something that you're particularly proud of. Definitely the whole LGT bit. Um, I think we've put in a big amount of work uh, into it, and I think it turned out quite nice. And uh, I know we've 
talked about the coverage, but I also mean the row to OGT bits. Uh, I mean, it was really fun to do those and to talk with all the guests we've had from all over the place. Uh, so I think that's something worth checking out if what, someone hasn't done that. Um, I think one of the more famous episodes uh, we might have had was with Tufus and Vladi when Harlequins dropped, mm. Uh, mm. <laughs> which was, I think, the first of the famous uh, air quote uh, rants that we yeah. have had on the channel, uh, which we became known for. Uh, so, yeah, I, th I think th th those are probably the ones most to remember, I would say, for me. Yeah, that the one with Harley Quinn is definitely kicked off uh, a notorious series <laughs> of rant <laughs> events. Uh, I enjoy that a lot. Um, uh, and also, you've mentioned the road to, to LGT. If anyone listening to this episode uh, hasn't heard it, but enjoys listening to us and our content, I strongly encourage you to go back and listen to that, particularly the episodes with the likes of Innes Wilson, who, first of all, uh, is just a quality person um, uh, on his own, but also he gave some sound advice on how to prepare yourself for an event and what to take into account when you're preparing yourself for events. Um, so that there is a lot of quality, uh, quality that for the ever like since the beginning of the year, I think you will have to pay for because in this together with Typhus, with Anthony Vanilla and so on, they announced that they are going to be offering a paid service for this. So go get your advice for free while you still can <laughs> on our channel <laughs> because in this um, really delivers uh, quality in that interview. So yeah, but that's just one of many. All of them were uh, high quality episodes, so I, I strongly recommend those. Um, Vitalis, anything that we've done that you particularly liked or maybe you would like to particularly advertise to our newest listeners? Uh, yeah, so two things basically. One, I've really enjoyed, and I really think our bad trip was was nice, uh, rough around the edges, like we mentioned. But I think it uh, it's uh, it has some good, decent quality to it. Uh, I really enjoyed both uh, listening to it after and uh, and uh, creating it. And the second, I think we we are going to be a bit repetitive this year. The LGT itself. Uh, but uh, not like you guys mentioned the uh, road to LGT, but I think our content at the LGT itself uh, was was pretty much golden sometimes. Uh, I was standing behind the camera and uh, both uh, listening, really interested about uh, your insights, our guests' insights, and laughing like crazy uh, about about all the jokes. We still have the bloop have the bloopers somewhere on my on my card so we Maybe will one day we will see yeah them. <laughs> we will release them eventually <laughs> uh yeah so those two things were really uh stand out for me uh, this year okay um so when it comes to me um uh, as i said when, when we uh, like uh, restarted the series uh in september last year i came back to the hobby from a pretty uh bad place uh, of like complete hobby burnout uh i when i stopped playing like i sold all my miniatures even the dice and and and, and paints and and all that so it was like rebuilding um both the podcast and my hobby self when, when i came back and um one of the most cathartic episodes that i think are timeless um in that way uh, is the mental health and burnout episode that we did that i'm particularly proud of um because we did like a, a survey for that when we asked over 100 people uh still might not sound too impressive but for me it, the, the response rate of you know like top players from poland and abroad uh is what makes up that 100 so so it's it's huge um we had a survey we published like the answers to that survey on our instagram we read them out uh, it was a really insightful episode that we did with uh, scary from scardcast because he also has a like a backstory of his own uh, darker moments that he shared during the, the episode. So uh, that was like a highlight of the season for me. And uh, yeah, I'll, I'll blow, blow my own trumpet uh, a little bit with the late night tweak. Uh, the 
the tactics one where like again preparations for tournaments what you have to take into account how do you analyze the um uh, uh the mission pack and so on how do you prepare your army for this um uh, th there was some praise that came from listeners uh including typhus regarding that episode so um yeah again if you haven't seen it uh, go 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 ahead and, and do give it a look because um there might be some interesting things that you perhaps have forgotten about or didn't realize so there there is there has been some quality some more than some i like to think uh quality in what we've delivered this year but you know we're we're closing this year um uh, strongly i would say this is the last episode of this of, of, of this season and of this year so let's look a little bit into the future and uh i did ask you about this year's uh, uh targets or the targets uh, for 2020 when we were entering this year what are your hobby targets for 2023 uh vitalis this time i'll start with you do you have anything um in particular that you're going to try and achieve or try and do uh i will split this question into two so <laughs> hobby as a modeling and a hobby as a, as a player so as a modeling, I would like to paint as much as I did at the start of the year, uh, because uh, back then I was painting like um, squat a week, one big miniature a week, something around the, those those terms. Mm -hmm. And right now I haven't touched my paints for almost a month. Well, I had other reasons called wedding or all that stuff related to that, but uh, petty things. Yeah, no, but really. yeah, but uh, even that, uh, even now, uh, I I I will not painting as much as I as I wanted to, as I would la want to, uh, even though I have uh, a bit of spare time. Uh, so maybe finish those Dark Angels finally, because it's like three thousand points sitting on my shelves unpainted. Uh, and from the from the player perspective. Uh, uh, par paradoxically, I would like to focus a bit more on a couple of armies instead of jumping uh, jumping around the the the, the bash. Uh, but I'm not yet convinced to which army to commit a bit more this this upcoming year. I guess it will evolve according with rules. So right now, I think I will focus on the guard a bit. And then we will just go with the flow. We'll see what GW brings us. So that's that's it for me. I'm not timing at any winning or uh, or anything like that. I'm happy with my middle middle table standings. So let's keep those middle ta middle middle table standings at least at the big events. Okay, that's fair. Joker, how about yourself? I don't actually have any targets specifically, uh, mainly due to how my life's uh, panning out uh, right now. So I've got a refurbishment in the house to finish, uh, which should result in a bit more hobby space than I have currently. So um, that should help, but it's not completed yet. So I need to get that done before I'm either bothered to do any painting or, you know, um, it's just not pretty comfortable at the moment. Um, and then I know that I've got some work trips coming up, uh, which my, all, all three of them might happen in Q1 and be like a week or two long each. Uh, and they're abroad, so that's going to be a bit difficult on the whole family life aspect and obviously even more so on the hobby aspect, probably. Mm. Uh, and because of that, I'm not setting any gaming targets, that's for sure, for this year. Um, obviously, I want to get as much painting done as possible. And actually, I'd like to put in more work towards our little endeavor that we have here at Contact Lost. So, uh, but we'll see how that pans out. Uh, and I mean, you know, just being more active in social medias. Uh, and uh, we'll see if I manage to put up anything else, but because of the reasons I've mentioned, I don't want to commit to anything here, right here, right now. Yeah, I'm looking forward to uh, you reactivating the uh, contact TikTok account. Uh, can't wait for some job oh, dances. Fuck's sakes, <laughs> I am not doing a TikTok. You started that, you do that. <laughs> uh, I, I think I posted one thing in that TikTok 
thing before the LGT because I, I thought that I might give it a go and we might publish something on TikTok. And then uh, we, should have done, came... we should have done a dance at the LGT. Absolutely. Yeah, that's a Mr. Fortune. So but... Yeah, that's. <laughs> oh, God. But, all all the know, views we could have had. But in general, I, I went in to front of the best painted uh, armies, you know, all the um, what you call it, all the army sets and the display boards. Oh, yeah, that's, that's yeah. the phrase in we front of all the display boards, you know, pointing oh, at particular set pieces <laughs> of each army. Center uh, pieces. Yeah, that would that, that would have had quality. I thought of that four yeah, months ago. Too do some Fortnite Fortnite dances or something like that. Oh my um, god. <laughs> but yeah, I in general I think I published just one thing uh on that TikTok account with a typo and uh, that led me to a conclusion that I'm fucking old. Like <laughs> I might be good at Facebook. I did, you know, in Instagram was already a lot in there. Oh, TikTok nah. Uh, mm -mm. I give up. Uh, I, 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 Facebook is for boomers, so yeah. Uh, yeah, so Instagram it is for me. I'm not going any further uh, with social media. Um, Sweet. But yeah. Uh, your uh, goal. Uh, my goal. Um, so uh, I think they are down to earth and simple. Uh, and but now, yeah, listen in closely, and I want you to um, to monitor that for me, because I intend to do something that I haven't done ever before, which is. I intend to play throughout the entire year with a single army. Independently from what comes out, what the releases are. I heard that there are some juicy Tyranid releases coming out with like a Blood Angels uh, starter pack or something. I'm definitely going to buy that, but I'm not going to play it because it's not the Tyranids that I'm going to be supporting throughout the entire year. It's Death Guard. Then I'm going to try and become a skilled player with Death Guard, which means that I'm not only going to master my own army, but I'm going to master all the matchups, uh, which I have a problem with today with any army that I play because I, I, I swap them too much. So like, I'm, I'm not very skilled in every single particular matchup with every single army. So I would like Death Guard to be that army that I understand all the matchups with and uh, see if I can become a better player through that. And a very down to earth uh, goal not to sell any army, <laughs> same one that I had for this year. Um, and hopefully, yeah, I, I, I am not forced to, I don't have to do that. Um, but me generally, if I do, it's usually because of me feeling down or, you know, burnt out. So I just don't want to reach that point where I feel burnt out about anything. So in this hobby. So yeah, we shall see. Um, I'm, I'm rooting so, for you. Uh, so because... basically, yeah, yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Thanks, uh, because over the course of last year, uh, I really grew fond, let's say, of uh, Asarnil and him playing uh, Death Guard consistently. Whatever happens, he was just playing that one army and getting good results with it, you know, coming up with lists that went well into the meta, despite all odds. It's just, uh, it was really inspiring and uh, just, you know, impressive. Uh, I was really impressed uh, by his run, uh, but I don't think I could pull it myself. I just like to switch styles every now and then, or even the, you know, uh, the miniatures that I take out of the box uh, in terms of how they look as an army, etc. you know, the aesthetics. Mm -hmm. Uh, but yeah, um, fingers crossed, hope you, you can manage it, pull it off and, you know, really do that. I'd love to do that as well at some point, but I don't think I would be able to, so <laughs> good luck. I'm on Joker's team on this one and I heard that it's, it's all sounds like heresy to me playing one army whole yeah, year. One oh army. my God. No, 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 no. <laughs> but I'm also rooting for you. I will slap you if I see you with the range. Yeah. I mean. <laughs> You know, you, you are forcing me to take turn to the team event on 7th of uh, of January, so uh, I will bring them, but that's probably the last time, and then I'm going to switch permanently. Uh, silently, to... silently pointing fingers at Joker. Yeah, it's his fault. We all know that. Um, <laughs> but anyway, uh, yeah, I mean, what Joker said, Asarni is actually the role model for this, for this because um, uh, I consider this an exercise because it, it has been always difficult for me to stick to just one army for longer than, I don't know, six months or something like this. So this is actually something more than just 
uh, consistency. This is like working on myself as well to, to convince myself to play one army and not swap it on a whim. So we'll see how this uh, how this goes. Um, I think we'll, uh, we will slowly be bringing this episode to, uh, episode to a wrap, but um, I want to ask you one final question, and that would be throughout what we have done throughout all all that experience, hobby experience, miniature experience that we've gathered, gathered throughout the year. Um, have you had any realizations? Have you had any eureka moments or anything like that? Anything in particular that you know now that you did not know when you stepped into year 2022? Uh, was there anything like that? Whoever wants to pick up that question first, go ahead. Vitali, start us off. Uh, well, realization. Uh, for me, maybe it was one one thing that uh, I stepped. I came back uh, to 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 forty k like I don't know three years ago, somewhere around eighth edition, three four years ago, something like that. Uh, and uh, I'm uh, I was very competitive player back back then uh, in other games. Uh, I have been blasting with with some card games, scoring tops in European uh, tables. Uh, I had my fling with X-Wing that I was very competitive at, maybe without solid results, but very competitive at my approach to it. And uh, I realized uh, at 40k at one moment, I think it was even this year, that I don't give sir, give a rat shit about the, the, the results. Uh, like I mentioned, I'm totally happy with my middle table. I do not aim at top 10. So of course, it's very, very nice to to to, to get there. Uh, I think I had one top 10 at, at this season. That was our heresy uh, on the courtesy of Broken Necrons. Uh, but I had a blast uh, playing uh, playing other tournaments, other not so competitive lists like my uh, Triple Knights. Uh, that was uh, catching people off guard. Uh, and even when I was losing or winning or winning by small points, uh, I had a blast. And I think that's the biggest, uh, biggest thing for me that I do not care about the results anymore. I just want to have fun and in this game. Wonderful. Joker, any specific Eureka moments this year for you? I've been trying to think up of any uh, during the whole course of Vitalis saying his stuff, uh, mm. but I don't think I I have come up with anything uh, other than maybe uh, I, don't know, I feel like every time I thought I'm getting better, I got smacked. <laughs> Same here. I have <laughs> At the some point, mm -hmm. uh, but then again, you know. Uh, Maybe also the realization that you really need to put in a lot of time if you want to be good, uh, you know, uh, have all matchups figured out, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Especially if you're not in like in the zone of playing tons of games, and I mean tons of games, uh, like five, six games a week minimum. Uh, because if you're not doing that many then it might be a bit hard to to adapt to the meta uh, in time to master it uh, if you know what I, if what i'm saying makes sense mm -hmm. um so i think maybe that's maybe i'll go with that for the realization what about you so um since it's my question obviously i have some thoughts about it um and there, there's a bunch of things i'll start with um the one that might sound obvious, but perhaps isn't. And it's that after meeting all those people that we have met uh, from different national teams, from different podcasts, and so on and so on. When I when we started this podcast three years ago, to me, it was like those people were someone I wanted to be, but they were also very far away. So like, it's it seemed almost impossible to like, you know, reach Skyrim or reach Stephen Box or something like that. They seemed like like celebrities and from movies and so on. Like I felt that if I reach out to them, you know, they are never going to answer to someone like me, blah, blah, blah. 
absolutely bollocks and not true. Um, all those people in this hobby, whoever, whatever name you think, the the top players that that you can come up with, they are great people, but they are above all normal people like us, and they are very approachable, very easy to talk to, very amicable. Um, willing to give you advice, willing to share their tactics, willing to share their lists. Um, I don't know if you feel the same about the people that we've met, but but the ones that I've met, they were ever so helpful. You know, Vic VJ gave us a lift to the LGD from the hotel just because he borrowed his, I don't know, dad's car or something. So it was the first time I sat in a BMW. <laughs> but, you know, um, I mean, things like this. Um, would you share that sentiment or is it just I mean the think, small town boy <laughs> I, I think you're hurting elf if he ever listens to that uh oh sorry he loves his uh bmw e46 or i sh i should have said a modern bmw <laughs> I, I i i hate mine <laughs> right um, <laughs> focus uh, on the point i don't yeah. i don't even have a witch and sprinkles in mine <laughs> Back back to the point though. Uh, yeah, I to I totally agree. I mean, you see these people posting YouTube videos, you know, uh, just doing this stuff professionally, you know, making a living out of it, having 30, 50,000 subscribers on YouTube or whatever. Uh, but then you go there, you're having a laugh with that guy, the other guy, another guy's giving you a lift <laughs> to the event or what, like you've mentioned. So yeah, it's, 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 it's a really nice community, I think in general, although uh, posting on Facebook groups, etc., you might see a couple of odd seats, but mm -hmm. it's just, you know, the atmosphere at events, etc. It's just great. It's buzzing and it's a lovely vibe and it's just really good to be a part of it. Definitely. Yeah. As I long think, as you... Sorry, Vitaly, go on. Yeah, sorry. Uh, I think the, the, the mention about the Facebook, when you would look at our community on Discord or Facebook, it's, uh, <laughs> it's uh, pretty uh, different than what you uh, will meet at the events because it's mostly friend, f friendly, ah, friendly ranting that's, uh, that's maybe a bit even toxic to someone from the outside, so. Yeah, I think, you know, as long as you don't go on Reddit and you don't call people entitled in the LGT thread, you're gonna be fine. <laughs> 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 but yeah, hey, uh, learn from that. Um, other things, so other things, other realizations that I've had, that I've made. Um, I. I I need to highlight and uh, shout out Stephen Box for one of the episodes, one of the recent episodes that he did on his podcast, because again, I was thinking about this myself. I wanted to do an episode about that. He just managed. Um, but they had an amazing episode uh, about um, the fact that it's not the armies that win, but players that win. And that we very often forget about that. Like, you know, when you hear that people play Tyranids uh, and that, you know, Tyranids won the event, people generally go and say, well, yeah, of course Tyranids won because Tyranids are OP. But it, in fact, um, it, in Poland, we say it's not the wand, it's the wizard that plays. And I think we forget this way too often uh, that it's actually the player and his skills, and we shouldn't be like demeaning the player by just assuming that the army that he's playing is strong and therefore uh, he won the event just by, you know, driving a, a sports car at, in, at, compared to the old BMW or whatever we were just talking about. So um, that's another realization that I have that we need to stop doing that because <sighs> it's taking away the fun from both the players who, um, who win events and the players who like plays in mid tables and then they feel bad because we are constantly being being told that the armies that we play should be winning and yet we don't win so yeah it's you know gives you that feel bad moment and i think nobody nobody wants that so that's another point that i wanted to um highlight maybe and the lessons lesson learned from this year i don't know if you share the same sentiment or not but kudos to uh stephen box for bringing this up in his episode yeah, I think uh, I agree with you 100% because that's what uh, I will go back to what I said. Basically, that's that's pretty much we 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 pretty much have the same 
moment here that at one 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 moment you you just realize that uh, hey I don't care I just want to have fun. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Yeah, I mean, I agree too with with uh, that sentiment about you know not uh, about the driver, not the race car, that they're driving. But uh, I think it's important to remember that not even Lewis Hamilton is winning a race driving a fucking minivan. So <laughs> true that. Hard to disagree. So yeah, yeah, the truth is in the middle somewhere. But uh, still, let's not take away the fun uh, from uh, from the game by just assuming that it's the army. Um, yeah, no, absolutely, hundred hmm. percent. Okay, uh, then something that is very close to my heart still. So the mental health. Uh, uh, I guess it's a realization um, that how well I do, but it's not only about the hobby. It's also about work, like how well I do at work, how well I, how well I do in the hobby. Uh, those things are intertwined and you need to take care about both your mental and physical health, like take care about your body, take care about your mind. Don't be afraid to take breaks. Don't be afraid to step away from the hobby for a while if you need, need to or change your focus to something else. Uh, I don't know, start a podcast or you know, go into painting or start reading the lore to rediscover the love for your faction or something like that. So it's not really, really, really a realization, it's something that we um, spoke about in the episode of, of mental health and more. Uh, but uh, again, I just feel that it's important to highlight that um, this hasn't changed and uh, don't let your mood swings uh, take away the joy from the hobby. Um, so that, that's something. Uh, obviously, what I mentioned, preparation is important. <laughs> so do learn to read mission packs, do learn to uh, understand uh, what terrain sets or terrain pieces that the missions are going to be played on or what tables you are going to be playing on, which missions you are going to be playing on, what the missions are about. Uh, reread the secondaries and understand the wordings or something. So I still find myself um, misreading the secondaries or remembering secondaries from Nakmund or something like that. So make sure you don't assume, just reread them and be sure. Um, and the last thing, absolutely last thing, and, and I'll finish here. Um, I know that some people in our mental health survey said that um, they're feeling burnt, burnt out or unhappy because they lack the time to play for various reasons. It could be because a baby was born, they are moving, work, something else. And they are considering even dropping the hobby for something else or computer games or something because they don't have enough time. Uh, so my realization, especially this year, is that it's temporary and this will probably change. So don't make rash decisions based on your current situation just because in three months, four months, six months, your situation could be completely different and you cannot even predict that. So I, when I started this in this hobby, I could play one game every three months and I was close to quitting because for me it meant relearning the game and the rules of my own army every time I went to a tournament which didn't end well. Now uh, I get to play three games a week plus do the podcast plus I get to travel to events to either cover them or play in them which is like a 180 uh, degrees change from the initial situation and I think it's possible for every single one of us sooner or later. This can happen for you as well. So don't get discouraged by the fact that today you don't have time to play the game because you will probably have that time tomorrow. Um, I don't know. Any of you guys can add anything or um, feel the same about anything I said? Yeah, I think I'm a great example of, about that because I have been quitting the game for like four times, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, during my break for, for, from fourth to uh, to eighth, uh, I have been buying armies, selling armies for different reasons, both financial ones and uh, time-wise ones. Mm -hmm. So every time I I regretted it after a while. So yeah, guys, if you really do not have the knife on your throat that makes you sell an army, don't do it. It will always come back and bite you in the ass.
Yep, 100%. So to all our listeners, we thank you for being there with us for all those, I don't know, around 50 episodes that we've done this year. We aim to do even more next year. Uh, we want to be more regular. We want to step more into the world of battle reports. Uh, we want to introduce Vision or maybe another platform. I don't know. We'll see. Twitch, whatever works uh, for others. We might try it as well. Um, don't forget that we, if you don't want to listen to us on, on YouTube, we are on Spotify, we are on Apple Podcasts, we are on all the podcasting media, basically, where we actually have more listens than on YouTube, which is great because that's what we were going for as well. Um, so I strongly encourage you to stay with us because there is more quality, more guests, more episodes, more stuff in general coming next year uh, with probably the, cher the cherry on top LGT again, because I think I can confirm that we got invited to host the LGT as uh, uh, commentators and so on once more. So if the stars align, if everything is fine, if I don't get sent to the United States or Cambodia or whatever, then uh, we will probably manage to do that and you will hear us again and uh, experience that together with us again. Um, and yeah, just a big thanks for sticking around and uh, please continue listening to us. If you haven't subscribed already, please do as well, because I like to think we are worth it. And then we'll hear each other in the next year or in the yeah. new year. And if you've got any concrete thoughts about the show, uh, we'd love to hear them as well, whether it's, you know, praise or maybe even more importantly, some uh, criticism, constructive criticism, feedback. So we can actually use this to improve what we do. That would be amazing. Yeah, looking forward to that because we are always striving to improve. So um, thanks in advance for this. Um, with that, I will conclude the episode and the season end the year and uh, until next time thank you everyone thank you guys thank you guys thanks happy new year yeah happy new year <laughs>